also uh, be thinking about all those people down there oh, in the absolutely. Carolinas and Florida and Georgia who are braving through that storm. We're glad that it is moving out into the Atlantic Ocean soon. We're going to get to more of that in just a few minutes. But first, good morning. Thank you for joining us on this Thursday, the last day of August. And when you know it felt like fall this morning. It sure did. No doubt it yeah. was uh, autumn is coming yeah. was yeah. the message there. <laughs> I'm Brandon Hudson. And I'm Amy Lang. And we have new information on the break-ins that happened near the campus of the University of Michigan. Police have now made an arrest. So between this and that cybersecurity threat, it has already been an eventful semester and it is still just the first week of classes. Robert Murdoch will join us now with the details from police. Robin, this is something that has kept students and their parents up at night. Yeah, it is uh, certainly a big concern for a lot of people, but police are telling us they did make an arrest uh, last night in a home invasion. Right now, they're trying to figure out if the suspect currently in custody is connected to that crime as well. As you know, there has been a string of break-ins in Ann Arbor as of late. We're talking about some uh, six different break-ins during a 48-hour period. Police have been working very hard on this, trying to get the word out to students to uh, be safe, to take extra precautions while they have been searching for a suspect responsible for these crimes. And again, last night they did make an arrest in a home break-in. Right now the big question is, is it the same person that is connected to all of these situations? And that is exactly what police are working to figure out. I haven't seen anything around, nobody prowling around or anything. It could be a big break and a bunch of break-ins at mostly student rentals near downtown Ann Arbor were told investigators made an arrest overnight after a suspect allegedly cut open a screen window and climbed into a home in the 900 block of Sybil. Ann Arbor police are now trying to figure out if the same man did the same thing several other times. It's just kind of overwhelming. We've just moved in and now we have to worry about this. During a 48 hour period on Tuesday and Wednesday, police investigated six different break-ins or attempted break-ins on Catherine, Prospect, and Dewey Streets, along with others during the month of August. The most serious incident, though, happening on North State Street when police say a suspect was seen wandering around a woman's bedroom, then ran out the front door when he was confronted. We just got back from school, or back to school, and it's... I don't know. It's kind of crazy that it's happened on Gather Street and I had no idea. The crime's obviously concerning to University of Michigan students just beginning classes this week. The break-ins and a massive multi-day internet outage on campus creating a chaotic start to the new year. Service has since been restored and a probe into that problem now underway. You don't realize how big it is or how important it is until you kind of actually don't have it. So it was definitely hard the first couple of days to transition back to school. A pretty unexpected especially at a large institution, but it happens and you just have to get through it. Like U of M students are doing here, so whether you're forced offline for an extended period of time or reminded to lock your doors and windows, especially if you live on the first floor due to a series of burglaries, you take it all in stride and take extra measures to protect yourself and your property. I'll definitely be more aware knowing this. Um, it's unfortunate to know that this is happening and we might not be as safe as we feel. Now, investigators tell me that in all of these crimes, it appears the suspect slid open an unlocked window, then actually used a knife to slice the screen window to gain entry inside of that location. Again, police, they are trying to figure out whether the person in custody, the suspect in custody, is connected to the string of crimes. We'll, of course, keep you posted on what they determine. Reporting for Fox 2 News, I'm Robin Murdoch. So Robin, we know how this suspect got into these homes for these break-ins, but do we know anything about the person in custody or the suspect personally? Yeah, police are giving a little bit of information concerning who is currently uh, in the Washtenaw County uh, Jail. They tell us that the suspect is 58 years old, that he is from Ann Arbor, and that he does match the description of the intruder in that North State Street break-in. They also tell me he is believed to be responsible for a domestic assault. Of course, we'll keep you posted on possible charges. Back to you. It's a good thing that police got him off the street. Robin, we appreciate it. Thank you so much. Amy.
Well, new at 11, an armed carjacking suspect was nabbed by police after a rideshare driver tipped them off. This all happened in the area of Edson Street off of Monroe. That's in between Oakwood Boulevard and Outer Drive in Dearborn. Now, according to WWJ News Radio, the suspect allegedly tried to steal at least one vehicle in the area. The man reportedly had a gun and fired shots, which caught the attention of police. Well, that's when an Uber or Lyft driver called 911 to say he was supposed to pick up a guy at Monroe and Outer Drive. That's when officers intercepted the man and arrested him. The exact details of the incident have yet to be confirmed by police. Detroit police need your help finding a man who broke into a home and set it on fire. Police released this surveillance video from a few weeks ago. It is a bit dark, but this is the person that you're looking for. Maybe you recognize the walk or the area of Ohio Street near Wyoming McNichols. One moment he is walking off screen with something in his hand. Police say he then forced his way into a home and set it on fire. The next he is walking away. Call Detroit Police or Crime Stoppers at 1-800-SPEAK-UP. And Hurricane Idalia is now being blamed for at least one death since making landfall along Florida's Gulf Coast. It has since been downgraded to a tropical storm as it makes its way toward the Atlantic Ocean. Fox's Caroline Shively is in Carolina Beach, North Carolina, with the very latest. Recovery efforts have already begun in Florida, but North Carolina is still in the thick of it. We are told to prepare for potentially life-threatening flooding. Idalia striking communities in Florida's Big Bend region as an intense Category 3 hurricane Wednesday. Maximum sustained winds around 125 miles per hour, tearing down trees and triggering record storm surge. Idalia is the strongest storm to hit this part of Florida to make landfall in this part of Florida in over 100 years. Many evacuees now returning to find their property damaged by the floodwaters. I was scared. As efforts to clear massive piles of debris and return power to thousands continue. Even though Adalia downgraded to a tropical storm as it made its way from Florida into Georgia, the winds and rain still cause destruction. Our trampoline is trying to make its way into the house. Idalia's might also lashing South Carolina with dangerous storm surge, turning roads into rivers in Charleston as surf crashed over seawalls. Coastal flooding is also expected in parts of North Carolina, where Idalia could drop as much as eight inches of rain throughout Thursday. Our response teams here in the Emergency Operations Center are tracking this storm and preparing around the clock. Adalia is expected to be out to sea later today. In Carolina Beach, North Carolina, I'm Caroline Shively, Fox News. And as we've seen time again with other natural disasters, if there is a silver lining to Adalia moving through Florida and other parts of the South, it is that these situations tend to bring out the best in humanity. Now, earlier we met with the volunteers of Draw, disaster relief at work as they packed a vehicle with supplies to visit the hardest hit areas. It's great um, being able to support people in disaster situations. We cut these into usable sizes. Chris Schmidt is Draw's warehouse operations manager. Along with the tarps for roofs and debris, buckets of cleaning supplies and flood bags, volunteers at Draw will deliver hope. I wanted to do something for people that are in need. I worked for 50 years doing all kinds of things and made people money. Now I'd like to kind of give back to the community. A map in the warehouse shows where the organization has traveled. In 2021, Draw responded to disasters with a combined 2,000 plus volunteers logging more than 19,000 hours of help. Hurricane relief isn't anything new, but I doubt you is the first major storm to hit the state this year. For the volunteers who will spend sleepless nights away from home, it's a labor of love. I love working with Chris and his warehouse, and my husband and I are recently retired, so we love um, making sure that we're helping out the people in Florida. And if extra supplies are needed, people will return to the headquarters. They'll pack up, load up another vehicle, and drive 17 hours down to send it. 
Good we have people like that working for everyone. Well, new at 11, the city of New Baltimore has declared a state of emergency after heavy rains brought severe flooding to local streets and property from last week's storms. The declaration will assist the city and its residents to potentially receive assistance for recovery efforts. Meanwhile, lakefront homeowners in Hamburg Township are working to protect their property from floodwaters. Nearly a week after severe storms, Sky Fox was over Orr Lake yesterday. Heavy rain Thursday and Friday caused a dramatic rise in water levels there. The water reaching several homes. Normal rainfall for Hamburg Township during August is about three inches. This year they've received more than nine. The flood warning for the area is not set to expire until the end of the day on Saturday. Yeah, a lot of water. We've had a lot of water this summer. I mean, we were the 10th wettest summer of all time. This August has been way up there as well. Uh, a lot of us averaging six to seven inches of rain when we usually only get about three. So it's been extremely wet. Let's talk a little bit about what is now Tropical Storm Adalia off of the coast of South Carolina, impacting spots in Virginia as well. It's going to be wet. It's going to be windy. And that storm surge is going to be pushing in on not as bad as what Florida dealt with. But they're still dealing with a tropical storm as that makes its way out into the ocean where then it will linger over the uh, um, uh, Atlantic for probably about a week or so. So I don't think we're going to be done talking about or at least showing Adalia anytime soon. I don't anticipate it making its way back into the United States, however. All right, here's today's forecast around here. Temperatures getting up into the low 70s. We'll go about 73 for high temperature today. Tons of sunshine. It does look pretty good. And then it gets hot as we head into the weekend. So we're going to kind of jump over Friday. We'll come back to Friday. Let's talk Saturday, Sunday, Monday with those temps starting to rise into the lower 90s. Humidity comes back on Sunday, so that 91 degree temperature actually feels more like 95. Five. Hope you got a good way to stay cool as we head towards Labor Day.